When we think of lava, it's natural to think of a volcano. Looking around the Black Mesa horizon, we don't see anything that looks like a volcano, though, here in northwestern Oklahoma. Or do we? What do you think a volcano looks like? Let's take off in the Terravator to get a better look from above. From high over Black Mesa, we can look down and see the flat-topped hill from above. There are interesting dark-colored patterns on the ground. Cliffs suggest the shape of an ancient river. Could these shapes mark the path of the river valleys that the lava originally traveled down? If so, the lava may have flowed into Oklahoma from somewhere to the west, in modern-day New Mexico, or southeastern Colorado. Let's use the Terravator to follow these cliffs of basalt off to the west. Maybe we can find the source of this lava. And if we're lucky, investigate a volcano. As we cross into New Mexico, we can see long ridges capped by the same dark cliffs that we saw at Black Mesa. The rocks appear to get thicker and more common the further west we go. On the distant horizon, we can see several interesting looking mountains. Maybe one of these could be the volcano that produced our lava flow. On the Terravator scan, we identify four mountains that look interesting. These could be volcanoes. Let's check those out in the Terravator and stop at each one. As we fly, up ahead we see Capulin Mountain in northeastern New Mexico. Its steep sides and cone shape, with the crater on top, definitely give this the look of a volcano. But we don't see any signs of it erupting now. Let's scan the rocks here to determine if it is a volcano, and if so, what type of volcano might it be? The rocks here are rounded, reddish-brown in color, and chock-full of gassy vesicles. These rocks are called scoria, and are a byproduct of a very gassy volcanic eruption. Many of the rocks here are more air than rock, and therefore have a relatively low density. The part of the rock that's not air is not too unlike that of basalt. Based on this data, we can guess that the rocks here were likely erupted from gassy explosions located nearby, rather than from rivers of flowing lava. The mountain has a steep-sided, cone-like shape and is made up of loose pieces of rock. The rocks are piled up high around the edges of the crater. There appears to be only a single vent, a crater at the top and center of the mountain. This vent was the source of a series of short, violent eruptions of gas and hot, cooling lava rock. The lava that spewed forth cooled quickly to form an apron of loose rock around the crater. Over many eruptions, the pile gets slowly taller and taller, eventually forming the cone-shaped volcano we see today. Let's scan Sierra Grande and collect some data here. Sierra Grande is made up of many overlapping layers of basalt, similar to the one at Black Mesa. The mountain is tall, but also wide and broad. It's a very different shape from nearby Capulin Mountain, which is not as tall and has short, steep sides.
A single vent appears to occur near the top and center of the mountain. From one central vent, the flows of lava appear to have originated. Sierra Grande is an example of a type of volcano called a shield volcano. Shield volcanoes are broad and wide, formed by many successive layers of runny basaltic lava. These mountains can erupt rather gently, without destructive eruptions. The lava flows here had low viscosity and ran easily from the vent downhill along the mountain slopes until cooling to form a new layer of basalt. This process is repeated eruption after eruption until the mountain is built up into the shape we see today. Very far from Black Mesa, in south-central New Mexico, we find the tall, steep slopes of Sierra Blanca. Unlike tiny Capulin, or broad Sierra Grande, Sierra Blanca is a true alpine mountain at 11,973 feet in elevation. Sierra Blanca is part of a volcanic field that last erupted about 24 million years ago. We find evidence of a complex history of lava flows, mud flows, and volcanic ash. Sierra Blanca is made up of a mixture of volcanic rock types, including andesite, a purple-gray igneous rock of intermediate composition. Also found in the area are rock formations called tufts, made of volcanic ash. Volcanic ash forms in a very violent, explosive eruption where magma becomes airborne and cools quickly to form tiny shards of glass and rock. These shards can fall back to the earth like snow, or, more dangerously, can be propelled at high speeds down the mountain's flanks as pyroclastic flows. These gas and ash flows can be catastrophic to anything in their path. We can also see a third type of extrusive volcanic rock here, called rhyolite. These rocks contain more gas and silica than their basalt or andesite cousins. As a result, their source magmas are high viscosity, sticky magmas that build up high pressures, leading to very explosive eruptions. At Sierra Blanca, these explosive eruptions produced ash flows that were intermixed with quieter eruptions of lava flows. The mountain is tall and very large and has two symmetrical sides. Smaller volcanoes can be seen around it. Erosions reshape the mountain, but it was once a large and imposing volcano. The mountain contains a central set of vents, as well as multiple vents along the sides of the original volcano. All of these vents allowed it to erupt not only from its top, but also from the sides. Eruption of the side vents results in the formation of new, smaller volcanoes around the mountain. Sierra Blanca is an example of a type of volcano called a composite volcano that contains a mixture of igneous rocks and volcanic ash. These tall mountains can and do erupt explosively, often from multiple vents or craters. Composite volcanoes can erupt sideways as well as from the crater at the top. North of Sierra Blanca lies a very unique volcano. This one is so large, you can only begin to see the whole thing by viewing it from space. Let's take a look at some of the rocks in this area and see if we can figure out what this giant feature is. Valles Caldera contains the most unique rocks of all of New Mexico's volcanoes. 
These cliffs are the remnants of gigantic eruptions that spewed millions and millions of tons of volcanic ash into the air. Entire cliffs of this ash can be seen in the rocks on the sides of the Valles Caldera. Many of these deposits were made by pyroclastic flows of staggering size. They can be found over hundreds of square miles of central New Mexico. The effects must have been devastating. Battleship Rock is a great place to see the actual rocks formed during a supervolcano eruption. Here we have a tall cliff made out of volcanic material, ash, rock, that rained down from the volcano at 200 miles per hour, superheated so much that here we can see bits and pieces of rock that have been molded flat with the force of the eruption. The rocks here near Battleship Rock were so hot that they flowed like toothpaste in the colossal pyroclastic flows. These ash beds are evidence of a very silica-rich magma and a supersized volcanic eruption. Valles Caldera no longer stands tall like a volcano. Rather, it has collapsed in on itself, forming a circular depression about 20 miles across. What would cause a volcano of this size to collapse in on itself? What happened to the magma chamber underneath? When the volcano at Valles Caldera erupted, millions and millions of cubic feet of rock were ejected into the air, and that left a void in the magma chamber below. So the entire top of the mountain collapsed, forming the caldera that we see today. This entire valley is the collapsed center of the volcano. Inside Valles Caldera, we see Resurgent Dome, which is the most recent lava dome built by new magma forming below the current caldera. Lava domes occur when the magma chamber fills up again from below and pushes up the rock above, gearing up for another eruption someday. The Valles Caldera is known as a type of large composite volcano called a supervolcano. The term supervolcano refers to the size of the eruption relative to other volcanoes. The volcanic explosivity index is a type of measure of how explosive a volcano is. The index rates volcanoes from a zero to an eight, with eight being the largest possible eruptions. Valles Caldera would have been a seven on this scale. The famous Yellowstone supervolcano is an example of an eight, about as big as they get. On the other end of the scale, the Hawaiian volcanoes and most shield volcanoes like Sierra Grande are only a zero or one on this scale. These are quite gentle eruptions that really don't explode much at all. Now that we've identified the main types of volcanoes, cinder cones, shield volcanoes, and composite volcanoes, can you take a guess as to which of these types of volcano might have caused the lava flow at Black Mesa? Take a look at this data summary chart. It shows the rock, shape, and vent data for the types of volcanoes we visited versus Black Mesa. Can you see which volcano is the best fit? Shield volcanoes produce the type of runny lava flows made of basalt that could travel miles and miles away to form layers like those at Black Mesa. All of the locations we visited are examples of landscapes that form when magma erupts and cools at the Earth's surface. We call the rocks that cool from this molten rock volcanic igneous rock. And the landforms that form during these eruptions are called volcanoes. Volcanic rocks can be classified by their composition into three broad types. Basalt, andesite, and rhyolite. 
Basalt is the dark colored, metal rich, and silica poor rock we see at Black Mesa or in Hawaii. Andesite is a grayish colored intermediate rock found in a wide variety of volcano types, from shield to composite volcanoes. Rhyolite is a light colored, silica rich rock found mostly in composite volcanoes and in supervolcanoes. And scoria is a rock similar to basalt with gas-filled holes that occur in cinder cones. All of these New Mexico volcanoes formed here when the Earth's crust began to split apart, allowing magma to rise close to the surface and escape. On our journey, we found three basic types of volcanoes, cinder cones, shield volcanoes, and composite volcanoes. We also found a very large version of a composite volcano that produces calderas, commonly referred to as a supervolcano. Let's look again at the summary table of information we've collected on our volcanoes so far. Cinder cones like Capulin Mountain contain piles of loose rock that spew forth near a single crater in short bursts of eruption. A shield volcano like Sierra Grande forms from gentle eruptions of rivers of lava that flow for miles. This is the same type of igneous rock that's found at Black Mesa. Composite volcanoes, like Mount Taylor, contain a complex history of violent eruptions producing volcanic ash, rock, and lava. When a large composite volcano, like Valles Caldera, erupts, it empties its magma chamber, so much so it can collapse on itself forming a caldera. 